Great. Now that we've gone ahead and prepared our hydrogen peroxide, we'll go ahead and get that set up there, set it aside. Now all that's left to do is go ahead and prepare the wine sample. That's my thing out there. There we go. All right. So all we do is go ahead and pipe at 20 mils of wine sample. And just as it was with the other pipette, the little bit that's left over as it's all drained out, just go ahead to leave. It's still going to deliver your 20 mils like it's supposed to. All right. So into that 20 mils of wine sample, we're going to be adding 10 mils of our phosphoric acid. So one thing to be aware of is that as soon as we add our phosphoric acid into the wine sample, SO2 gas is going to start to be released. All right. All right. So you want to go ahead and close this up as soon as possible to make sure that enough of the gas gets trapped inside. There we go. That will have accurate results. All right. So make sure all the connections are secure. Just push them on, they go pretty snug, fairly easily. Make sure that our stoppers are tight and everything here. That's about it. All right. And then we can go ahead and turn on the pump. The pump will go ahead and push the air through the system. Air will be pushed through here. It's going to bubble through the wine. It's going to make the gas disperse from here. The gas is going to be pushed, continued through here. Gas is going to be pushed through here. It's going to bubble through the hydrogen peroxide and then the air will come out this hole here. So it's a closed system and it comes out here. So whatever gas happens in this impinger, we'll have to go through this liquid to change it. So if there is sulfur, which is acidic, coming through our color solution, it will turn pink. All right. So go ahead and turn the pump on. I already plugged it in. Just by unscrewing the little guy here, you can see that bubbling starts to happen. And you could see we've gone from a light green already to kind of a charcoaly color. Just the same exact thing it did when we were adding the hydrochloric acid after we added the distilled water to prepare the hydrogen peroxide system where it went from kind of a green color, kind of a charcoaly grayish color back to the pink color. Same thing happened here. And that's showing evidence that indeed there is sulfur gas in our wine sample. All right, so we'll go ahead and let this run. You're going to set a timer for the next uh, 10 to 15 minutes. Somewhere around there is perfectly fine, 10 minute minimum. Uh, whatever you do wind up doing, it's pretty good if you can be consistent to that. So if you like to let the sample run for 15 minutes, make sure that all of your samples run for 15 minutes. If you like 10 or 12 or whatever it is, set the timer, be consistent. Uh, that way, each time you test, you'll have a pretty common uh, benchmark between the two. There may be a little bit of a difference of PPM, kind of negligible, maybe five or six here or there, depending on if you let it go longer than if you went shorter. And for the most part, you know, it's kind of ballparky, but just in the interest of being as accurate as possible, uh, it's a pretty good idea to go ahead and be consistent with that. So whatever time you do, go ahead and stick to that.